In 1956, the group Claussen Community Club Players was first formed. When they later moved their productions to Madison Heights, they changed their name to Stagecrafters. In 1965, the group leased the old Clawson City Hall building for three years. They then moved to the former church property on Bower Street in Clawson, which became Stagecrafters Bower Street Playhouse. Welcome to Stagecrafters at the Baldwin Theatre in Royal Oak. In 1984, Stagecrafters took on the task of restoring the Baldwin Theatre, making it their new home. Many members of the community were enthusiastic and supportive. One such person was Mert Harris. Mr. Harris worked his way up from a ticket taker to a technician at the Baldwin Theatre in the late 1920s and early 1930s. He later was a retired Royal Oak City official and a well-known organ enthusiast. In October of 1986, to express his appreciation to stagecrafters for restoring the Baldwin Theater, Mr. Harris donated a 1926 Wurlitzer Theater Pipe Organ. Under the direction of stagecrafters members Howard Barron and professional organist John Lauder, Restoration of the organ began in January of 1987. After many years and many hours of replacing, repairing, and assembling, the organ was christened at the American Theater Organ Society's convention, held at the Baldwin Theater in July of 1995. Stagecrafters' first silent film, Theater Organ Concert Series, was held during the 1995-1996 season featuring the silent film, Phantom of the Opera. The original Baldwin Theater organ was removed in the early 1940s. Now in place, our theater organ consists of 669 pipes in the two chambers, ranging in size from steamboat horns to penny whistles, along with xylophones, bass and snare drum, chimes, bells, whistles, cymbals, and glockenspiel. When we were doing the restoration of the theater back in 1985, um, we were, had scaffolding floor to ceiling, wall to wall in this, in this place. And at one point, a gentleman walked in, uh, old, older gentleman, probably in the 70s or 80s, saying, um, boy, you're doing a lot of work around here. We said, yes, yep, we, we know that. Um, you know, there used to be a theater organ in this place. Well, uh, yeah, we do. We, we have seen the chambers here, but there's no organ here now. He said, well, I have an organ in my garage. Would you like it? We said, sure. We hooked up with this one gentleman named John Lauder who um, knows a lot about organs and volunteered his time to uh, assist us in really uh, figuring out what to do next because there's no instruction book with these things. We didn't get the whole kit. We got a fraction of the kit. And we went back to the guy who gave it to us, Mert, and basically asked for the things we were missing. His garage was just packed with organ uh, parts. So we were crawling all over these things with him and he said, well, um, you can have you know, that, you can have that, you can have one of these or two of those. I was the guy that knew how it went together and he kept saying, where's the drawing? Where's the instructions? <laughs> <laughs> the old theaters really had the best acoustics and there was a period in time that we've really just come out of where all of these modern auditoriums built after the Second World War were notable for how horrible their acoustics were. And in the case of this theater, it's blessed that the chambers have humongous openings. The, the organ speaks through an opening that's nine feet wide by eight feet tall, which is very generous. So that allows a lot of the sound from the pipes to come straight out without having to turn corners, which sound doesn't like to do that. Any kind of sound doesn't like to turn a corner. Well, I just stepped up and said, I'll, I'll take it on now. This was in 1985 or 1986. 
little did I realize that it was going to be a project that would take 10 or 15 years to do, but uh, it was just the, the right thing to do to, uh, to really continue the restoration of the Baldwin. The chambers are the original chambers that were here from the Barton organ that was here when the Baldwin Theater was built in 1922, and we were fortunate that no one had put anything irreversible like heating and cooling equipment in them. We're in the main chamber right now of the Baldwin Wurlitzer, and it's called the main because the main voices of the organ that make up the foundation sounds are here. Uh, this is part of the diapason rank over here to my left, and this is called the eight foot octave. Behind me, these folded pipes are the 16 foot octave. Over here on my right, your left, is the manual chess, and there's five ranks of pipes in here. This rank you're looking at right now is called the tuba, and it's really more of a trumpety, coronet kind of sound. Next to it is the rest of the diapason, the higher notes of the diapason, the two ranks of strings, and then the flute. Below here, these are the bellows, the, the reservoirs, that control the pressure of the air coming from the blower. It comes at a much higher pressure than it's needed at. These regulate it to a lower pressure and maintain that lower pressure during playing. So they bob up and down depending on demand. We're in the solo chamber of the Baldwin Wurlitzer now. Solo because that's where most of the solo voices are and a lot of the fun toy-like things. There is a stop that is the foundation of the theater organ is the tibia clausa and that's these wooden pipes they, they turn into metal when they get small but they're wooden pipes and they they go higher than this there's another set of 12 you can't see and they get as large as this this is the biggest one right here and he sounds something like this and he doesn't want to talk today and there's his brother and there's, this is another part of the tibia. This is the, we call this the eight foot. I'm operating what's called the primary valve in order to make that sound. That's part of the operation that is normally done electrically here. People think of the organ as the, the console that you see uh, uh, the organ is playing, but it really is a lot more than that. There are electrical conduits that run to both rooms as well, and we ran telephone wire from the chambers down into the relay room, knowing that that was going to be the nerve center. The relay is kind of the 1920s computer that sorts out all of the information coming out of the console and turns it into the information that the pipes and the percussions need in order to play. It's as simple as a doorbell, but done hundreds and hundreds of times over again. And what the relay does is it allows you to share the same ranks between the two keyboards and pedals and combine them in different combinations to make different sounds. We're here in the relay room of the Baldwin Wurlitzer. This is down in the basement. And these are the two 1928 electrical computers that the organ uses to figure out what instruments to play when we push the various keys. Uh, these are called switches, and they correspond to all those tabs you see, those, those switches around the horseshoe of the organ. This is the relay part, and this is the nerve center of the organ. This is original equipment, although not original to this organ. We adapted them from another Wurlitzer organ, so it was all compatible. This is the junction board where all the wires meet. We're here in the blower room of the Baldwin Theater. Right now, we're directly above where the organ console is. If, if I was seated at the organ and I look straight up, that I'm in a room directly above the, the plaster ceiling that you see, the, the beautiful ornamental ceiling. This is the blower to the organ. This is the source of the air that powers the pipe organ. And this was the big problem all along. Uh, it was The blower we received with the organ was never adequate to the task. We had hooked another blower in parallel with it to try to build up the pressure, which sort of worked, but there were always reliability issues and 
problems and problems during programs which is never good so when we had our last catastrophic failure we just said that's it no more there's a gentleman out in Seattle by the name of Bob Odie who rebuilds these and makes them brand new and I give you your brand new blower this was purchased by stage crafters in a teaming of stage crafters the Motor City Theater Organ Society and the American Theater Organ Society who generously donated a large sum grant sum for the purchase of this but for the first time ever in the history of this organ we have a blower that is adequate to the task that is trustworthy and boy does that feel good we did this pretty much on a shoestring we did not yeah. um, you can buy a lot of this stuff from uh, Organ Supply, brand new, all ready to install. Well, and you can pay. You can some, pay. You can pay somebody tens else. Of thousands of dollars. You can pay somebody else to do all your restoration work right. too, and and that's. But we didn't do that, so we bought everything that was back from the 19, you know, tens, 1920s, and did all the restoration if it yep. was not uh, working or it's ourselves. My vision for it is to be another instrument in a public location in Detroit. But what this represents for me is a re-expansion of our mission, which is to preserve these instruments in their natural habitat, which is an old theater. I'm a professional theater organist, and actually I grew up uh, playing the organ around the corner at the Royal Oak Theater. And that's where I learned to play uh, the theater pipe organ when I was about 10 years old. So I've been playing in this area for a, lo a long time, but I've also, uh, played around the country and around the world. But another tie that I have with stagecrafters, my kids have all been in this, the youth theater program here, so this theater is very special to me. And the theater organs were in most of the quality theaters, the, either the neighborhood houses or the downtown houses. And uh, really you could uh, judge kind of the theater based on the organ. So if they had a, like the Fox Theater downtown that has a very large organ, actually they have two. So it's very prestigious to have a theater organ in your theater. But as a professional theater organist, it's a great pleasure to play here and to play in a real theater on a real Wurlitzer pipe organ.